Football made simple. Become great at your craft by finding ways to make it simple for those around you. This is the Coaching 101 Podcast, hosted by Find A Way Productions. With your co-host, Daniel Chamberlain and Kenny Simpson. What's up, coaches? This is the Coaching 101 Podcast. I'm Daniel Chamberlain, here with Kenny Simpson. Coach, how are things in Arkansas? Hot. You know, it's hot now. Uh, season's right around the corner, and so... For us, it's we're dealing with all those wet bulbs. I don't know if everybody else deals with like the wet, you know, I call it the orange ball. You know, that just makes my job so much harder. <laughs> we're not we're not a school that has an indoor. And so, you know, now do you need to modify practice or do you move it to the evening or try to do it in the morning? You know, or are you going out there and having to go just helmet or just shells? And so to me, I understand the safety and I appreciate the fact that we're trying to keep kids safe. I get all of that stuff. But the irony of that thing is not lost on me that you cannot practice if it's above it, but you could play a full game right? if it's above that and explain that to me. Yeah. Now, I'm, there is some um... – that five days a week safety versus, you know, the scheduled game. I, I don't know what the, we, we deal with it in the military too, right? With the practice uh, and we use a wet bulb, same, same, you know, if it's a certain um, heat category, then we at some point work for 10 minutes and rest for 50. Like that's, we had, that's our work rest cycle. And, but you know, like you said, if it, when you're, when you're doing it for real, like there's, there's nobody saying stop the war <laughs> with right. it's too hot out here. Well, it's, I get the idea behind it. And unfortunately some idiot coach, you know, took his kids out there when it was too hot and wasn't smart. And so because of one person who was neglectful, the, the hundreds of others of coaches that, that are going to be smart now have to kind of jump through these hoops. So I understand why man, it sure does make my job hard. <laughs> Our, uh, at Stillwell last year, we had the little Kestrel and man, that thing made it easy. You just stick your hand out there and all right, we're good. Or what, you know, if whatever the temperature was, but, um, yeah, man, wet bulbs are the, they run the world sometimes. We've been lucky to have some, some thunderstorms here recently. So it's keeping things, I guess the humidity's high. That's not so lucky, but, um, you know, we, at, at least it's kept it cooled down on some days, but well, that's good, man. Um, Practice and everything going well for you guys, I assume, ready for, for season. Yeah, you know, at this point, everybody's feeling good about themselves. Or If you're not, then you're in a world of hurt because everyone's undefeated right now. So, you know, and uh, we've had all summer to kind of compare ourselves to some of the local teams. And, you know, we feel like there's a lot of potential. So uh, you should be excited at this point. If you're not excited at this point going into the season, it's probably going to be a very long, long year for you. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I believe this episode comes out. So people are listening to this somewhere in the late July, early August. So, so the episode might be a little late. Um, but what we're talking about today is picking your offensive scheme. And in the next couple weeks somewhere, we'll have a picking your defensive scheme. So um, realistically, if you're listening to this and going, oh, yeah, I do need to change my offense. Don't do that. Okay. Run what you have. But have adjustments. It's okay to now go, hey, my personnel doesn't fit what we've been trying to put in. I need a package or I need a, you know, whatever it is. Um, if you're trying to stack them in there and you've got no tight ends, you might need, you, maybe you do need to go ahead and just kick a little old guy out there and tell him he's a slot receiver and just unpack the box a little bit. So um, the options are, are all doable. This is not the time to burn the playbook and try to start over, though. So, Coach, before we get started, why don't you um, just refresh our memories on some ways that we can make coaching simple for our coaches and players. Sure. Yeah, coaching 101 Podcast is a Find A Way production. Find A Way Productions also host Offensive Coordinator Academy, which we've now moved to a new platform. So you can go to OffensiveCoordinatorAcademy.com. We've also got it now on the Mighty Networks. And so you can go connect with coaches from 50 states only for members. And so if you want to do the, you know, buy the whole shebang up, up front and go through the academy, which at this point in July would probably be a lot, you're welcome to do so. But if you'd also like to pay monthly, we now have that option. So if you want to sit in and we're going to bring in some great offensive minds every month 
Uh, we're also having a lot of discussion going on over there. So officecoordinatoracademy.com will kind of direct you where to go if you're interested in that. Also, defensivecoordinatoracademy.com is in the same boat. You can go over to defensivecoordinatoracademy.com, go through the whole shebang. Um, there's a lot of great speakers. You can pick and choose the category you want to hear from. Okay, Or, again, you can move over uh, to our Mighty Networks area where we have defensive coordinators from all across the country, collegiate level, high school level, youth level, a lot of great connections going on there. Uh, for coaches to get through. And again, we're going to bring in speakers in that group as well throughout the season. Uh, and of course, we've been doing it throughout the off season. Finally, fbcoachsimpson.com is also another website. You can go find 32 books now uh, for your program, ranging from scheme specific, like we're going to talk about today with the gun T, 10 books over the gun T, a lot of other books over offensive materials, the three four swarm system is over there. A lot of materials over there. Um, anything you want offensively or defensively, or if you're trying to struggle with organization, a lot of organizational materials are over there to kind of help you. We've got weekly planners that are meant for in season for offensive, defensive, and head coaches. And I think right now those would be a really good product to get. All it is is helping you organize what you're doing. We we'll give you an example. We we'll give you kind of a template. Then you put in what you need. So all of that stuff's over at fbcoachsimpson.com, or you can reach out to me. Of course, we're in season now, so probably text or email is the best way, and I'll try to direct you where you need to go. Absolutely. I think it's super cool you've, you know, kind of categorized all those things. So, you know, you don't, no one has to buy one full package. They can get just the one they need or whatever. Um, also, we have Adaptable PT, Adaptable Physical Therapy. Uh, that is led by my wife, Dr. Samantha Chamberlain. We're here in Grove, Oklahoma. I say here, I'm in Jay, but... You know, just up the road, a mite. Um, biggest things there is she practices PT 2.0. So that's one on one care every time with the same licensed provider. Uh, she's very, very big on that. She wants to make sure that she's seeing you every time or one of our employees, whoever it is that you're seeing, um, they're with you every single time so that there's a history, there's a relationship. Um, the same, and we preach relationships all the time in football. It's the same in PT. Uh, very fitness forward approach. Um, she's very, she likes to uh, put an emphasis on dosing correctly. And what does that mean? It's like, you want to make sure you have the right intensity for what you're trying to do. Old PT, you may come in and do rubber bands for six weeks. And she's big on, I mean, her first piece of equipment she bought for the new clinic was a squat rack. And she was like, we're going to load them up and we're going to make them healthy. I'm like, all right, let's do it. So um, she just doesn't want to waste your time, money, or effort. Come in and get fixed the right way. Uh, and also, she wants to make sure that your efforts, they should exceed the effort that you're going to do in your day-to-day -day tasks. So you're not going to come in and have an easier time than you would have if you were just unloading some groceries or, um, you know, kind of be bopping around the house. So um, she does exactly what I do in football. So she travels all over the place. She podcasts. She teaches online classes. Like, it's really awesome that she has gone so, um, she's taken this digital age and ran with it in PT. I just love it. It's great. Anyway, uh, we are at Adaptable PT, or excuse me, AdaptablePhysicalTherapy.com. You can also reach us at AdaptablePT at gmail.com um, if you want to set up an appointment today or just come by over in Grove Town. You can look it up on Google Maps and it's there. Also, Athletic Speed and Movement. That's AthleticSpeedMovement.com. That's where uh, Joe Daniel and I have taken Dell Baskett's 40 plus years of knowledge and put it online to be at your fingertips. Um, level one is a 12 week program. It's available right now. Um, if this comes out July 30th, you may have 24 hours to go get in on that 50% off before the price jump. It's a, it's actually a hundred dollars off, but it's a little more than 50%, but, um, that's a one year subscription. So you're going to get it for just under a hundred dollars. You get in there before July 31st. So scoot on over to athleticspeedmovement.com. Um, there's plenty of testimonials. There's lots of information on the website. Uh, I got to talk to Ron Roberts, the defensive coordinator at Auburn, and he's a true believer in it. I got to talk to the, one of the winningest coaches in California history. He uses it every year. Uh, his name is Randy Blankenship. He broke 311 wins last year, so he is, uh, he's a dude. But those guys love the program. They use it every single year. Some of them have used it for 20-plus. So athleticspeedmovement.com. Uh, jump over there and sign up today. Now for the podcast. So uh, we are talking about picking your offense. So number one, we're just going to know what do we need to consider when we're picking that offense? When, we, when we've opened the menu at the IHOP of offenses, uh, which section do we go to and why? Yeah, and I kind of starting this whole thing off, I would say this whole podcast could be sponsored by Bill Belichick. I, I really look at him 
as one of the the gurus, and, and I'm a Dolphin fan, so this is hurting my soul <laughs> to say all of this, but a guy who maximizes and adjusts every year to what he has. I'm old enough to remember Don Shula, a guy who was in the 70s with the Dolphins where they ran it and threw it twice a game and won Super Bowls. And then he inherits Dan Marino, and they throw the ball every down, and that's what I grew up in. And so as a coach, <clears throat> the first thing I'm going to say you better figure out is your personnel. Like you better figure out what you have now and what you have coming. You know, it's you don't want to be a guy that, hey, I have a great quarterback this year, but I don't have another great quarterback for the next eight years, so we're going to run this kind of offense. So I'm not telling you to – Every year you have a personnel, you need to have a whole scheme change. But I am telling you that your personnel, specifically on offense, the quarterback and the and the line positions are going to dictate a lot of what you're going to be able to do or not able to do. You guys all know, if you're hearing this podcast, what offense I run. And I'm not trying to sell you on that until the end of the podcast. So we're just going to talk general things here first. But I think that your personnel needs to be the driving decision behind everything you do. You know, I know that a lot of coaches will say, well, I know this offense or I grew up in this offense or I learned from this offense. And the biggest mistake a lot of coaches make is they come from an offense that they were very successful in and they move to a new area and they just make the assumption this offense will be successful here without considering all of those options. So personnel is a huge one. And you think about Bill Belichick, uh, the way he talked about our job as a coach is to maximize the ability of what we have and to hide or minimize the lack of ability we have. This episode is going to be really easy because I think offensive coaches that are good at what they're doing, you control the flow of the game. You control who you maximize, who you minimize, who you attack on defense it's going to be really hard the next episode where we talk about defense because it's really tough on that one to hide guys. But on offense, you have the ability every play. You have the ability within your scheme to hide a guy, to hide his weaknesses, to to act, you know, to, to uh, show his strengths. So personnel is big. Second thing I'm going to say is you need to make sure you are looking at um, the system. You need to have some kind of system. Don't think that you're, you know, the next, the next guy who's going to reinvent the wheel. I'm a guy who came up with my own system, so don't think I'm, I'm telling you not to be inventive. <laughs> of course, of course, be inventive. But you don't think all of a sudden I went out there and I invented Buck Sweet? No, I went to the gurus of the wing tee and said, "Explain this to me and let me become as much of an expert of it as I can." Right. And then I went to the gurus who ran RPOs. And then I went to the gurus who ran the spread world. You go to guys that have a built-in system, and that's your base. It's like when you cook. You have a base. You have a base that you're going to, you know, there's going to be your foundation that everything's built around. And then you add seasonings. Unfortunately, now when I watch a lot of offenses, I see a whole lot of seasonings, a whole lot of basil and oregano, and not enough flour. You know, not enough where we're really good at this or really good at that. Instead, we want to be really cool at everything and the flavor of the week. Be really sure. careful you don't do that. Like, you can win running the air raid. Guys have won at the highest levels running the air raid. You can win running the flex bone. Guys have won at the highest levels running the flex bone. You can win running the under center wing tee. You can win running the gun tee, which is what I run. You can win running name the offense you want to win. Right. What you really can't win at unless you just have immaculate talent or extremely intelligent players is what I call the multiple offense, where we run a little of this and a little of that and a little of this and a little of that. Now, if you've got dominant players, you don't even need to listen to this podcast. Just go out there, throw a ball out there, and you're going to win games. Right. So I'm talking to the guys that, you know, you're in those games where the talent is relatively even or you're behind. You need to have – some kind of system that is the basis of your offense, you know, that you can go find answers for it. And we'll get to that on the second question. On the second question, we're going to talk about ways to adjust it. So those would be the biggest two things I would give you is one, you do have to adjust to your personnel, but a good system ought to allow you to do that. Like you ought to be able to adjust within a system. If you're running the wing tee under center and you have a good quarterback, throw the ball more. 
Okay. If you're running uh, the air raid, you know, and you have a dominant X receiver, well, choose those plays from the air raid to get that guy the ball. You know, that's what I'm saying on personnel. Uh, I'm not saying like we have a we have a good quarterback this year. We're going to run air raid. We don't have one next year. We're going to run wing T. I'm not saying that at all. <laughs> I'm, I'm saying you have to you know, highlight what you have, right? Highlight what you uh, have, but but have a system you believe in. You're, you're probably going to struggle to run some schemes if your O line can't perform, right? Uh, uh, oh yeah. If you're a pocket passing offense and your O line can't stop water, um, what are you going to do, right? You're you're going to have to re think things you got to be able to modify it anything in um, every in every one of those systems we mentioned there's built in a jet like the air raid guys if your offensive line sucks run a bunch of screens right that's what that's what they do or run a bunch of quick game you know so there are answers inside the system to match the personnel but when you jump from system to system to, that's when you get into trouble yeah and, and and not everything that works this year is going to work next year right you may be inside zone this year you may be a power a power counter team next year because of what your kids can do. What can your running back read? What, I mean, there's always going to be those options. Personnel is huge. I, I love that. Um, every time I think about system, and I hate to even mention the name because we don't like the guy around here anymore, but Lincoln Riley comes to mind because he is a Mike Leach tree from Texas Tech where it was, you know, the air raid. It was, let's go, the spread, let's go, you know, throw the ball around. And then he comes to Oklahoma and I think he did it at East Carolina as well, but, you know, he's, big he's well known for his gt counters and power i don't counter. even know they read power they uh, power i think they just ran counter i mean it, it was just that, that's what he needed that's what he needed to run to get those quarterbacks but look at who he had he had kyler murray's baker mayfield um jalen hurts so absolutely you're gonna let those guys run the ball right because they can absolutely they can do it they can do that job um so he took an entire tree and changed it um i think you can go out and probably find a system and modify it to your players whatever you need and I'd still hate Lincoln Riley, so from every Oklahoma fan. Hey, but I'll tell you what, if you want to learn how to run GT the new way, you need to study him. Yes, unfortunately. Um, so the last point that I want to make here before we move on to the next question is just coach what you know. Um, don't, when we start talking systems, if you have been brought up in the wing T, you don't have to go out and learn air raid. That's not a requirement. If you know the wing T and you know how to make adjustments and solve problems in the wing T, run the wing T. Now, you may look at the modification. I maybe go out and get the gun tee, right? So now I can get a quarterback with some wheels and let him do some things versus hand the ball off or run waggle, okay? He can he can be pulling some, some backdoor counters and everything else. Um, if you're a pro-style offense guy, which is kind of, I guess, what I consider myself. I've been brought up now with fullbacks uh, in the flex bone and then the gun tee, and I have put them all together and made it in some version of, I like to have an H-back bouncing around, right? So... Uh, but coach what you know, and that's, uh, I actually took that from Randy Blankenship when I, I got to interview him the other day and he's been in the wing tee for 40 years. You think he's had the exact wing tee players every year for 40 years? Heck no, he hasn't. Okay. But he found out how to modify what plays he can run to do the job with what he has. Um, but he, the biggest thing is he, he knows how to solve problems in the wing tee. So he just keeps running it and he's got 300, over 300 wins doing it. So yeah. anything can win. And he's in, uh, I believe Southern California. And when I think California, I think air raid. I don't know why. I'm sure there's plenty of wing team coaches that are just laughing at me like, uh, nah, dude. Yeah, I've traveled to California, and uh, that is the name that you hear over and over when you want to learn wing T. Yeah, he's, he seems like uh, the dude. So, All right, question number two. Uh, why can't we run a little bit of everything? So you, you foreshadowed yeah. this. <laughs> yeah, uh, so uh, they, we kind of talk about, you know, being the flavor of the week. And, and I'm going to speak from experience. So – Recognize, like, as coaches, we all learn, you know, and sometimes our intelligence can be our downfall. Like, you know, I had I had learned a little bit of this and it was good, and then I had studied a little bit of that and it was good, and I had studied a little bit of this and it was good. And do you want all of that in your office? You want – so you'll hear these things referred to as tools. You want as many tools in the toolkit as a coach to go to, okay? And that's not a bad thing. Unless you're like me. So I walk in our garage and my wife has every tool because she's learned how to use them. But the tools she has in my hands are worthless because I don't know exactly how to make that work or not do it. So here's what I'm talking about. So here's what I would do as a younger play caller is I would call this play that was a great play. And when it went wrong, I had zero idea how to fix it. And so I would just, okay, we can't run that play. Well, coach, we spent 
40 minutes this week working on that play. And I don't know how to fix it. So that one's out. Let's go to this play. And this didn't work. That one's out. Let's go to this play. So first thing I'd say is when you run too much, you're not going to really know. So then the note I kind of made in our notes here, Daniel, was, you know, when you go to a doctor, they have people called specialists for a reason. Like if I got to get, you know, my, cause I've had a, I've got some skin issues. I've got to go to, go to a dermatologist. Okay. I'm not going to a dentist to work on my, my skin. You know, I'm not going to go to, you know, we're going to go to an athletic trainer who's going to work with me, not like my kid's doctor. They're both really smart. They're both doctors, but one of them is a specialist in this. And I go to them for those answers. And that's what I think as a coach, you need to strive to become within your offense right. is a specialist and whatever that is. So for us, obviously, buck sweep is a big thing that we do. So we have all of these built in answers for if this goes wrong, we do this. If this goes wrong, we do this. If this happens, we call this. All these specialized things within that base. You can't do that. If we're running 17 run plays and 25 pass concepts on top of a million formations, you can't be a specialist in that. It's impossible. So to me, you need to kind of figure out what we're going to be really, really good at. Okay. Um, and then I did say on this, you can be more multiple some years than others. If you have a, a very intelligent group of kids, specifically quarterback and O-line, if, if those two groups for you, are pretty experienced or intelligent uh, or very coachable, you're going to be able to be more multiple, you know, because you can put more things on the quarterback if he can handle them. Okay. Your job as a coach, remember, is to show off his strengths and hide his weaknesses. Some years for me, my quarterback strengths are they have a great arm. Some years they have great legs. And then the special years, they have great minds. And that's the year we can be really multiple, okay? Same thing with our offensive line. Some years we're big and strong and physical. Some years we're quicker and undersized. Some years we're extremely intelligent. Now, I've got a group up front now, a lot of 4.0 type kids. Well, that group of kids can make all kinds of adjustments. We can run a lot of pin and pull multiple ways. We can run fan blocks because they understand all those adjustments within it. So we can become more multiple. We can put in, hey, let's run some GT this year because we have a guy that can do that. And so it's all based upon what your kids can do. Um, this, then the last thing I want to kind of mention is when you put a lot in, you've got to figure out in a given week at a normal high school, you're probably realistically, unless you're going to kill your kids, going to get 45 minutes a day during the season to work offense. Okay, you, you factor in if you're, I mean, we're a big defensive team, so we're going to give them the same amount of time. Then you factor in breaks. Then you factor in special teams. And then we don't like to practice more than an hour, 45 to two hours, because I want my kids fresh for a game. So you put all those factors in. You really have 45 minutes a day to get ready to play a game. Okay, so now multiply that or divide that out by how many plays you have. Okay, well, how much time do you have to work that stuff? How many formations are you going to run? How much RPO game are you going to run? Or whatever your offense is going to be good at. And then you better be really, really good at what you do. Because a lot of times as coaches, I think we outthink our things ourselves as an offensive coordinator. So I want to have multiple different things to show you. So let's say I'm going against you, Daniel. So we're going to go in in a week. And I'm going to try to put in all the five new plays that you've never seen on film to beat you. That's what I used to do. Okay. The reality is, guess how much time you had to prepare for my offense? You had 45 minutes a day. And if we're really good at what we did in our base, you're not going to be able to stop that. I mean, in 45 minutes, we're really good at it. But I'm letting you off the hook. If I throw in five plays, we kind of suck running. Like that we're kind of okay <laughs> at. We don't really have a base. You know, you as a defensive coordinator now are like, well, they're multiple, so just get lined up right and tackle because they're not really good at anything. But this guy's their guy. I stop him, okay? But if I have a system in place where we have all these answers, I can show up on Friday night, not really have a game plan, and, oh, the inside linebacker made the tackle. We're going to run this RPO. 
hey, this guy made the tackle. We're going to run this play action because I know the system inside and out and our kids know it. So now we can spend all our time in practice getting better at what we need to be good at and not trying to install things. If you're installing things in week three, four, five, and six, you're probably not going to be doing really well. I'm just going to throw that out there. It's probably not going to go very well for you. What you need to be doing during those weeks is fine tuning and, and fixing the little problems, not installing new stuff. Um, I, something we've talked about for years is just, if you're bringing something in, I, there's kind of three questions. Number one, does it have a purpose? Or am I just bringing something in to bring something in? Because we've all seen the coaches that watch Twitter and watch the highlights and watch Saturday football. And they're like, I have to run that play this week. Okay. Does it have a purpose first and foremost? Second, what tendency are you breaking or is it, are you playing right back into another tendency? Because then it's the same play. Like why, if I'm a outside zone team, I don't need another version of outside zone, right? Like just do what you do. And then the last one is what are you taking out? You've got, you can't, you can't go in with 30 plays. Um, and I referenced, you know, Bixby obviously is the, the team in our area that I think they had a 54 game win streak going on last year that got snapped. And then they went on to win the state championship. Um, and it's like they're ninth in a row or something crazy. I don't know, seventh in a row. They're obviously very well coached. They just keep kind of reloading players and going again. And this year I get to coach against them. So I'm pretty excited. That's going to be a, it's going to be fun. All right. It's a real challenge. Um, they have 15 plays. They run 15 plays and that's passing and running. That's both sides of the ball or both sides. Of the, 15. That's it. And everything else they do is just exactly what you teach in the gun team. That's, that's dressing it up. That's changing the eye levels. That's changing people's, you know, making linebackers look over here. Here's the shiny thing. We're going to trade. We're going to motion. It's just 15 plays ran a thousand different ways. So you don't, the most successful people in the country aren't out running 45 plays. Um, I, when I came into a team a couple of years ago, I got on their huddle and they had 400 and some odd plays in their playbook. What are you doing with 400 plays? Like you can't remember those. If you've got to take out the sheet <laughs> and it's, and it's a, uh, you know, it looks like you're doing a science project on the side of the, uh, the, the sidelines down there. The kids can't remember all that. So, um, less is more, right? It's always gonna be less is more. So just make sure you're answering those questions. And the biggest one is what are you taking out? Because when you want to put in duo, which I have always wanted to install, what other inside run player are you taking out? Because if it's inside zone and that's what you've been leaning on, maybe that's not a good decision. Maybe you don't need duo that bad. All right, last question here. Um, how do you find more information on offensive schemes? So if you were going to, a new coach comes to you and said, coach, uh, you know, we got a whole new batch of kids, don't know what we're going to do this year. Where, where's the first place you send them? Yeah, there's two places. So I'm, not, and I'm this is not meant to be a marketing effort, but I do want, we do have a couple different products that we kind of send people towards. So we have the offensive coordinator academy.com and that's got every flavor of offense and we're working on that. And, and next year, I think we're going to make the big transition into that one where we actually have multiple offensive systems inside of that. But right now it's more of a uh, academy to teach you how to think on your own. So we kind of give you samplings of this, that, and the other. So I would direct them that way because uh, right now basically is, is used as kind of a platform to help you create your own because I think that's what all coaches want. We want to learn from somebody else, but we want to have our own system. We want to have our own kind of creation. So that's right. one way. If you want a full system where we just, and right now in July, you might want that. If you want a full system, I'd go over to the gun team. Um, I, I can promise you that you're going to have <laughs> more than enough information to install it. It's over at fbcoachsimpson.com. So that's available to you as well. You could also reach out to guys that run systems. I know there's several. I know Joe Daniel has multiple ones. I know there's a lot of guys that run the Flexbone guys. There's kind of a group you can go to to, to meet up with those guys. Roger Holmes is a wing tee guru. You're kind of late in the game to get a guy's time on the phone right now. So that's why a lot of guys like me have put it out digitally, just because I don't, I don't want to have a guy who's in need that I can't help. And so there are a lot of guys who have been great to do that. I know there's air raid materials as well. I would go to one of those sites. Your school will cut the check or they're a horrible school because they don't want to win games. You know, they'll cut the check for you to go learn an offense. And there's so much out there digitally right now you could go to. But I would start again. We kind of mentioned on the first question, have a base. 
That doesn't mean you're married to the space and you got to name it all the same. And you got to do everything the same. Have some kind of base that's been proven to work. Okay. And then from that base, that's when you start thinking about your personnel. Okay. How does my guys, how does this work with my guys? At this point in the game in July, run, like Daniel said, run what you have, but maybe reach out to a couple of guys that are running similar offenses that you know would be willing to, to get on the phone with you and walk through a couple of plays. Yep. And you can reach out to me there. I, I, I know a lot of Kenny's. I know a lot of Joe's. I know, uh, you know, I've now learned about five different offenses. So if it's, if it's a uh, flex bone, don't call me. I, I don't like to flex bone and I'm not any good at it. So I've just watched it fail too much. So, uh, you have to call someone else there. Um, but yeah, you're right. I, you know, yours is, um, I've loved since the day that I was introduced to it when I came over to that. Well, actually, I think we had you on the other podcast, right? And then I came to Batesville and I just absolutely, I, I love that offense. It's, it's so much fun. And then I just took it and Joe's and just tried to marry them because I like having an H back and no tight end sometimes. And and I just felt like that was a little more freeing, a lot of inside outside zone stuff. So I, like coach said, find one of those things that are online that you don't need to steal their time. Yes. It takes more of your money because you're not going to get it for free. Um, but I mean, let's be honest, it, everyone pays money to get better at their craft. So if you have an online thing, you can dip into at two o'clock in the morning when you're sweating, how are you going to, you know, <laughs> how are you going to run this play versus that monster of a three tech? We've got you covered. Uh, I would just say, be careful with, you know, the Twitter, the YouTube, the coach tube, um, Glazier drive. If you're getting on there to learn football basics, that's, that's probably okay. If you're getting on there to create your system, just understand that, that, you know, that's, that's like coaching or football porn. Like it's, it just goes on and on and on and on and on. And you can get addicted to just running through these plays and watching. Um, I made a tweet this week about coaches need to read a thousand ways to, to run power, you know, but they won't read one psychology book to figure out how to get to their players and, and make sure their players are doing okay. Mm -hmm. So um, just be, be weary of you're getting on there and watching dudes that are doing all this miraculous stuff because that's their system. That's what they do already. They may have thrown in a single wrinkle to throw off a defensive group that day, and they might have done it in college where they have, you know, hours with these kids, and, and that's all they do is sit around and think football. So, no, I, And I just put out a tweet I, just today. I put it on, on the Gun T account where it shows us running the double handoff with a stay call and a lock. So there's a lot of adjustments going on in the play. Well, there's guys commenting on that about, man, we need to put this in. Whoa, 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 whoa. You don't just put that in. Like that's part of a system. We run buck and we work that thing every day. So that's what Daniel's kind of referring to there is that wasn't just something we stuck in on Monday and ran on Friday. Like right. that's something that's part of what we do. Yeah. Um, so just be weary if you're going online to find that stuff off of a single video. Um, uh, Joe and I have laughed for the last couple of years because he'll share a video or, he, you know, and, and, Coach Simpson, you do too. You share part of your system on Twitter or on, you know, for free because you want people to see it and see that it's organized and see it's a good product. And he, you know, people will message him six or seven months later and be like, you know, I've been trying to run your offense. He's like, oh, well, I don't have your account. Oh, yeah, well, I didn't buy it from you. I just used these six videos you put out and I tried to recreate your playbook. Like, right. you so, can't do that, right? So just. And I'll, and I'll give this caveat. So guys that are listening to here, I know that we have some guys that are at schools and, and uh, you know, I recommend you guys get the system. If you're a youth coach or you're a guy who's paying out of your pocket, man, message me. I, there's a lot of guys that I've given a lot of material to for free because I want our youth kids to have good materials. And I, I'm not in this to, to be rich. We do this stuff. We want to help coaches. So if you're in that boat, you want to learn a gun tee and you are coming out of your own pocket for them, you're coaching sixth grade, fifth, whatever it is, reach out to me and, man, we'll figure something out. Absolutely. All right, so that pushes us off to uh, what not to do as a coach, everyone's favorite section of the podcast. Um, so what is today's lesson, Coach? What are you teaching us? All right, so today's lesson I actually got from one of the guys I've heard at a couple of clinics. Uh, I think it's Rick Stewart. You know, I've, I've heard him. I've got to speak with him a few times. And this is the, the phrase he refers to as guys that don't have a system. He calls it running a Frankenstein offense. So today's lesson is don't be a guy who runs a Frankenstein offense. And what that is is, like we've mentioned, a little bit of this, and a little bit of that, and not a good base. You know, Frankenstein freaks people out because he's got a part of this and a part of that and a part of this, and you thought it was going to be really cool, and it turned out to be a hideous monster. And you see that all the time, 
with guys that are running different things on offense. We run a little bit of power and we run a little bit of mesh and we run a little bit of this. And all of those things are good. Like mesh is a great play. It's a very expensive play. Power is a great play. It's an expensive play. Buck sweep is a great play. It's an expensive play. We're going to get in a tight end H back and then we're going to go five wide and then we're going to personnel package it. And that works if you're the Kansas City Chiefs because they have Patrick Mahomes and they go sign free agents that can do that at your high school where you are working with a 16 year old and the same type of kids. Most of us, let's try to be really good at what we do within our system. And so going a little here, a little there, a little everywhere is usually not going to end up very good for you. I, I would kind of put a little caveat here. It's nice to have wrinkles, and I'm not in here suggesting you don't have little trick plays and little things that you do to get cheap points. Of course, of course you do. But spend your time on the base. Spend your time on the base. Frankenstein wouldn't freak you out if he was wearing like an armband and had maybe one arm that was extra. But the way he looks when he's got all kinds of crazy stuff going on, and that's where we get as a coach. And then I'm, the last thing I'm going to say on this is, like, I'm a huge buffet guy, uh, but I'm also very dangerous because there's two things with me on a buffet. One, I'm cheap. So if I pay money up front for all you can eat, you can bet I'm about to leave that place sick. Okay. And the second thing is I can't just eat, like, a meal like at a, at a normal place. I'm going to go over and visit Mexico with a taco bar. And I'm going to go over here and visit – you know, the Bahamas with a, you know, with some kind of lamb kebab or whatever. I'm going to go over and visit Italy with a little bit of pizza. I'm going to go over and it's a great place to go eat. And then I leave sick. Okay. And as a coach, a lot of times that's what we do. We go over and get a little bit from here and a little bit from here and a little bit from here. And it's not going to work out. So just be really careful, you know, that you are building your own system and you're not, just randomly sticking things that don't really go together together. You know, I get a lot of people say, we're going to run the wing T air raid. And I go, unless you really know what you're doing, that's going to be really tough. Yeah. <laughs> I love it though. I mean, I love the, the ambitiousness to go out and say, I'm going to put these two extreme opposites together. Let's, let's do it. Yep. All right. Well, let's uh, close it here, out here, coach. If you'll tell me how to simplify coaching once again for uh, my coaches and for my kids. Well, this whole podcast has been talking about offense. So Coaching 101 podcast sponsored by Findaway Productions. The main product I'd, I'd recommend you guys go look at is OffensiveCoordinatorAcademy.com. You can look at getting the yearly plan or we now have monthly plans. So it's a place for you to go get any material you want. we got the workbooks over there. We have the weekly planners, which I think would be a really good thing to look at, help you get organized with what you're doing. We're not telling you what to run. We're just giving you ideas and letting you plan it. Of course, you can go over to the Mighty Networks area where it's monthly, okay, uh, where it's going to give you the ability to just pay like 19 bucks a month, and you're going to get all that stuff. So it's an incredible deal, especially for this point. Or if you're on the other side of the ball and you made it through our podcast, you could go to DefensiveCoordinatorAcademy.com. Everything I just said in reverse. They have the planners over there, the workbooks over there. We have a defensive line workbook, lots of different materials you can go through. Now we have the monthly plans available on that one also. If you want to learn the gun T, I'd recommend you go over to fbcoachsimpson.com. That's where it's all housed. You can get the full system at this point. Probably be worth getting if you think that's what you're going to run. Or if you just want to get a playbook or you just want to get a material about buck sweep or material about formations, that's over there as well. If you're a defensive guy, there's all the 3-4 stuff. And then we have all the other stuff. So we talked about scheme this entire podcast. However, Daniel kind of made a comment towards you can have all the scheme you want if you can't reach your players and be organized. None of this is going to matter anyway. So there's a lot of materials in that world about connecting with your players, about having weekly themes. We have the team theme books that I think are really good, easy to go through. I've already written the curriculum for you. If you want to reach your players on a deeper level and talk about things that are more important than football, we have three of them out now, the team themes one, two, and three. Basically, this is exactly what we do with our kids. So if you want to know, it's not something I'm just putting out there, it's something we go through with our kids. It's already set for you. So if you're wanting to connect with them outside of the scheme, that's probably a good place to start. Awesome. On social media, I am at Coach Chambo OK on Twitter. You can email me at ChamberlainFootballConsulting at gmail.com. 
Um, unless it's the Flexbone, do not email me. I'm, not, I'm just kidding. I will, I will find a way to help you because that's what we do here. We find a way. Uh, Coach Simpson, where can we find you on social media? Well, all things FB Coach Simpson. So FB Coach Simpson is my Twitter handle. Of course, we're in the Facebook groups, lots of different Facebook groups. Those are all free. You can find me on YouTube. There's all kinds of stuff on YouTube. And then, like I mentioned, we've now just started those monthly plans. So if you're interested in the gun tee, we have one of those available. They're over at the Mighty Networks, where you can kind of get connected. Just uh, message me, email address, fbcoachsimpson at gmail.com. And we'll connect you into one of those more premium type groups where you can uh, get connected with guys that are running maybe whatever you want to get connected with. Perfect. The podcast is at Coaching 101 Pod on the Twitter machine. Uh, feel free to reach out there, DM us, comment, message, share stuff, whatever it is. Uh, that's where we'll be letting out our little sneak peeks of the upcoming episodes. We want to thank you for being a listener of the Coaching 101 Podcast. We hope you'll join us next week as we continue to make the complex more simple. Please consider subscribing to the show so you'll always know when the new episodes are out. We'll leave you with this. It's hard to beat someone who never gives up. No matter the situation, find a way. Thank you.